Well, welcome back. We are speaking with Aaron Reeves, the executive director of aquatics at the YMCA of Northwest North Carolina. We're talking about swimming. We're talking about water safety for kids and adults, everyone who is in the water. All right, this question says, should we wear goggles when swimming? Are they just for fun or are there any health benefits for wearing them? From a health benefit standpoint, I mean, we're not supposed to be swimming with our contacts in, but be a great way to be able to swim, have your, have your goggles on and, and, and wear those. But if it adds to a, a child's confidence and it adds to their enjoyment of being in the water, I say wear those goggles and have a good time and let them explore underneath the water and see what all's down there. All right, so we know that um, swimming is a, it's, it's a life skill. It can save your life. What happens if we've enrolled our kids in swimming lessons and before you know we go to swimming lessons every single time, they're just like weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> How do we help them out? I think we just need to reassure them, um, let them know that it's going to be okay. Let them know that nothing's going. You know, that that you, know, you you love your child. You you're doing to, to constantly reassure them that the, it's going to be okay. That they're not going to be harmed by it. Um, but having the crying child is, in my years of experience with swim, is it that that is part and parcel of it, and it is part of the game know that your child is not going to get injured you know by being a part of that swim lesson and they'll they will be fine they will eventually get over that crying part yeah i mean i think that is a very natural thing and maybe parents are kind of almost on that side like the embarrassed side of like oh my gosh you know what am i doing and maybe i'm making it too much of a deal but that is kind of a normal thing absolutely it, it it is it is part of it and our child our children are just it's something they've never experienced before and they don't know how to deal with it they don't know what's going to go on i think talking to them prior to the lesson this these are the things that you could expect these are the things that are going to happen mom or dad are not going to be in the water with you this time we're going to sit by the side and we're going to watch but you, know, you you are okay i have entrusted this person with your safety you're going to be okay yeah, I think that's a great thing to like talk through the expectation of what's going to happen so it's not a surprise. All right. Um, speaking of that, let's talk about like right now you guys are enrolling for swimming camps. Yes, yes. Our lesson program is open um, and, and we will we have those all throughout the summer. Obviously, we, we offer swim lessons year round, both to the, uh, the preschoolers uh, and, and school age kids, along with the uh, adults. Um, so, yes. Okay, someone's asking, can you swim after a hip replacement? Absolutely. It's the best thing to do. I had my hip replaced uh, about a year ago, and as soon as the doctor released me to get back in the water, that's what uh, that was the best thing for me was to get back in there to start that rehab and, and working on it. Obviously, you've got to work with your physician to understand what your limitations are. Um, there are some things that they may restrict you from, but getting back in that water, it, it, it helps take weight off that joint and is a great way to get that range of motion back. So um, I am one that has done that. It's a great way to do it. Good to know. Okay, someone's asking, how do you know when it's time to get out of the water when a storm is coming? That is, uh, you, you just you need to pay attention to the lifeguards that are there. If you're at a facility like you know the hotel pool or whatnot, when you hear it, you need to get out and and it, we need to remain out of the water for about 30 minutes. Uh, every every place has a different um, set of standards, but, but know where you are, what it is that 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 you need to follow. Uh, we follow a 30 minute rule here. Um, some places it's 45, so you just need to pay attention to that. All right, and someone's asking, um, what about swim lessons that maybe have a scholarship or something like that if you um, can't necessarily afford the regular swimming classes? Absolutely. We, we work with all, everybody, wherever you're at. Um, we have a process that you go through to apply for a scholarship for, for any of the programming that we do. Um, so when they apply for that, they just need to uh, go through that process. All right, and just a real quick recap of what we need to do this summer as the pools are opening, what is the number one thing we need to do to keep ourselves and our families safe? In my opinion, we need to make sure we've got swim lessons. Uh, we need to make sure that we're watching um, each other and we need to make sure that those that can't swim are protected with a, that, that uh, life jacket. That's right, and that is the Coast Guard approved life jacket, not whatever you happen to pick up that, that's really cute that looks like a certain kind of animal. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, thank exactly. you for your time and your expertise. If you missed any of this, it's going to be in the two wants to know section of our website.